All right, we got something new here from the folks over at Opez. Let's get this open and check it out. All right, what we're looking at today is the brand new Opez Exodus 1500. So we have our unit here, comes with our manual and a couple of cords here. Let's see what cords we got. All right, so we've got a, a cigarette lighter adapter to an Anderson power pole connector. And that goes right here, as well as our solar panel connector goes into the Anderson power pole connector here. And it's got a dual set of MC4 connectors to be able to hook two 240 up to 240 watt solar panels on there. Now this is a maximum of 30 volts on the in solar input. We'll talk about that here in a little while and what that means. Let's go ahead and get this turned on. So it is a little loud there at start up there with an, at uh, just a startup procedure. It came at 66%. Uh, charge, which is good, anywhere between 60 and 70 percent. Charge is good for delivery. They have to have it a little bit less than 100 percent in order to ship it safely. So that's right in the range of where it's supposed to be. So what we've got here is two QC 3.0 ports. I think those are 15 watts a piece. I will double check and make sure, and I'll put that right here. I think those are 15 watts, maybe 18 watts, and then two PD. 140 watt ports so this will charge all the current modern devices uh, uh, MacBook Pro and a lot of the Windows laptops now can uh, use these 140 watt uh, PD USB-C ports you got your IOT button which stands for Internet of Things so that's how you would turn on your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth you just push it one time it turns it on there and you can hook it up to the app. We got three 120 volt plugs here for a maximum of 1500 watts, which is what this is rated at 1500 watts with a 1488 watt hour battery capacity. So these are 20 amps each for these sockets. Looking over on the side here, we've got where your AC power plug goes, which is your standard computer style uh, cord, like so, which comes with it and your Anderson power pole and a circuit breaker reset switch. Got a fan over here and a fan on the other side as well. That's a nice flat surface up at the top here. It does not have a uh, wireless charger. I actually don't like the wireless chargers anymore. I have a couple that have that and have had some problems with you stack something on here or set something metal on there. Um, it can cause some problems. So I don't like having the wireless chargers on the top unless it's just a little uh, power station to charge your phone and stuff, which I do like having multiple power stations with different functions and uses for each one. Now, the, the, the smaller power stations is what I like to charge my devices for the most part with and then use something big like this to do a little bit more heavy lifting like running uh, a, a induction cooktop or something like that. And that's where this 1500 watts is really gonna come in handy for running something high power or some high power uh, power tools and things like that, depending on what you're going to be using it for. It's got your uh, 12 volt DC, like cigarette lighter port and a couple of barrel jacks as well. And this is a 12 volt 10 amp max. So what they recommended is that you drain this all the way first and then charge it all the way back up before you really start using it. So we're gonna go ahead and put a load on this, drain this all the way down to zero, and then charge it all the way back up again. We'll check out all these features and see what it can do. I really hate to waste power. So what I like to do is transfer power from one power station to another power station so that I could recycle and utilize some of that power for a practical use. I'm all about practical use. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our other power station here and 
transfer the power from this one into a, re a really big power station that I have over here off to the side. First, we've got to turn our AC on. Here we go. All right, so we're charging at 425 watts. So we're going to go ahead and drain that out. And then, uh, so I'm putting the power over there into that power station. Then I'll go in reverse and use the power that I put over there to charge this back up again. So I'm not wasting energy. Whenever you go fully off grid, utilizing and, and not wasting electricity is very much a thing. All right, like I said before, I like to do things that are practical in every one of my videos. So we've got this all the way charged back up to 100% here. We're going to test and see if we can get to this 1500 watts. And what we're going to do is make a grilled cheese sandwich and some soup uh, in this little Hittrick cooker here at the same time. All right, so we'll get our AC turned on here. And we'll have our induction cooktop. We'll go ahead and uh, go with watts. It's already on 1,200. And we will start. There we go. That should get up to around 1,200 watts. And then we'll go ahead and get our little Hittrick cooker, which is another 350, approximately 330. Go ahead and boil this water here. Puts it right at 1,505 watts. Get my uh, grilled cheese sandwich started here. I like to put mayonnaise instead of butter on mine. All right, we get that going. I want to get me a spatula here. We're down to 1,420 watts as it's getting... This is getting hot enough. As you can see, we're already pretty toasty on the bottom. I like mine pretty toasty, though. We're going to go ahead and kick this up. Like I said, this is about 350, and then it's about 600 uh, if you go on high. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can trip this thing. So 1,668 watts. Let's let that run for a few minutes and see how long we can go over the rated 1500 watts. Perfect. We get our uh, my favorite ramen here because that's fixing to start boiling here in a minute. It's still going strong at 1657. And this sandwich is almost done here. Should have started the soup first, I guess. Uh, water's almost at a boil here already. We've only used 2% of the battery. We get that up to a full boil where I put my ramen in and then it boils for three minutes. By that time, this is going to be done. It's already done. Better get that off of there before it burns. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and un unplug this one, which is this cord. And as you can see, this is drawing 687 watts all by itself. We'll go ahead and finish up this cooking because we want to see to make a grilled cheese sandwich and a basic ramen. How much percentage of the battery is this going to use? All right, this is starting to boil here. And I like to cook my ramen with the packet in there. Some people like to do it the other way around and wait till it's done, but I think it helps add a little something to the noodles. Just use this. All right, we'll let that go for three minutes. I'll set a timer here. All right, we got to turn this down now, or it'll get boiling way too much. 
energy on the medium setting, 320 watts, but it will go off and on in order to maintain the heat. So sometimes it'll go completely off and then turn back all the way back on. Let's try not to uh, steam up my screen here on this. Get this good over a little bit. They always say it, it's three minutes to boil ramen, but I'm going to go ahead and do it for five. So let's go ahead and do another two minutes here. All right. So we got our ramen and our grilled cheese sandwich done here. A little bit almost too done on this side with just under 7% of the battery. Let me eat this up and we'll be back. So my goal with this video was simple. I wanted to use an everyday thing that people would use something like this for. Now you may think uh, because I've done grilled cheese and ramen in some previous videos that's all, that's all I eat. However, uh, that's far from the case. Uh, my wife and I both uh, love to cook and we eat lots of other things. Um, but I wanted to use something that was an example that pretty much everybody uh, is, is accustomed to so you can get an idea. A grilled cheese sandwich and a ramen are kind of a staple unless uh, you didn't put yourself through college, maybe. I don't know, but I think pretty much everybody has made some ramen and probably made a grilled cheese sandwich. So I wanted to see practically what would this use um, as far as the percentage of the battery. Now, I could sit here and keep doing and keep doing more and more testing and find out uh, how long it would take to drain but we could be here all day doing that. At 1,488 watt hours, that's pretty substantial. But what I wanted to show was too, is that you could do that both at the same time, two cooking devices at the same time. That is where the 1,500 watts really comes into play. Now I have a long-term use for this, and that's kind of what my, the direction I'm trying to go with my channel a little bit more, is not just do simple one-off reviews, but test and use these things over time and share my experience with them with little short clips here and there. So I'll give you a sneak peek of what I plan to do with this on a regular basis and then share updates here and there with little clips in some of my future videos. So here's a little sneak peek at what I'm doing. All right, so far, I'm really impressed. We were doing way over the 1500 rated watts. The capacity seems to be great for what we accomplished uh, with only 7% battery. And uh, stay tuned, be sure to subscribe if you find want to find out more about what I'm doing with my secret little project that I shared a sneak peek of there. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.